Greetings traders and welcome back. My name is Chris and I will be your host today as we slide down the slippery slopes of Survival Guide Street. Today we'll be diving into the world of corn. Did you know that the average ear of corn has around 800 kernels, usually separated into about 16 rows? And did you know that it almost always happens that an ear of corn has an even number of rows? What corn video wouldn't be complete without some corny facts? But I digress. We're actually going to be talking about corn futures today. And before we do that, let's show you how we can apply some corn futures to our chart, just in case we want to follow along with price as we talk about the futures market. First thing we're going to do is go up to the top left here, and we're going to click on our symbol finder, where we're going to type in a forward slash ZC, as in Zulu Charlie. There she is, corn futures, and we are all set. Now, let's dive on into it. Corn futures. If this guy had a voice, I imagine that's what it might sound like. But other than that, corn futures are one of those things that... Not a whole lot of traders gravitate towards in the masses like the E-mini S&P 500. The grain markets are always a little bit left untouched, but that does not mean there isn't value in being aware of what is there. With over 14 billion bushels of corn produced in the United States every year, the U.S. is the largest producer and exporter of corn in the world. The U.S. exports approximately 20% of the world's corn supply and contributes at the same time to over 40% of the world's corn production. Some of the major uses of corn that draw people to it would be things like food products, livestock feed, as well as ethanol production. The food consumption category in and of itself is expected to rise with the glowing global population rising, putting corn in a good place to continue growing as far as production demand. With the help of these graphs, geographically speaking, we're able to see which states inside the U.S. are producing the most corn in regards to bushels. Our number one state is Iowa and has been for quite some time. Number two, we have Illinois. And number three, we have Nebraska. That represents a good portion of all corn produced in the U.S., but there are some very worthy runners-up like Minnesota and Indiana in fourth and fifth. And as we continue down the list, it's also worth noting that states like Ohio, as well as Wisconsin, and Missouri all produce large amounts of corn as well. The majority of the corn, as you can see, is coming out of Midwest U.S. Now we know where the corn is coming from, let's talk about how the ticker ticks. In the United States, corn futures are traded at the Chicago Board of Trade, which we know as the CBOT. The symbol for corn, as we already discussed, is ZC, just in case you're coming in late, and one contract of corn is worth 5,000 bushels, and that is key to remember. The minimum tick size is one fourth cent per bushel, which is worth $12.50 a contract. That is $12.50 a contract. In the futures world, it is crucial to understand the value of change in whatever it is that we are trading. So let's take a moment and look at some math. Now, don't run away. I'm going to do the math for you. All you have to do is sit back and relax, and I'm going to make it very easy. So let's imagine that the front month of a corn contract is trading at $4.50 a bushel and makes a $0.05 cent move up. Based on this, what is the value of the price move in terms of a single standard corn futures contract? So we need to solve for the value of that $0.05 cent move. Well, let's go ahead and grab our calculator and do some math real quick. If we take $0.05 cents times 5,000 bushels, we'll be given $250 as a result. So that means a $0.05 cent move in corn would equate to $250 in terms of a single standard futures contract. Well, what about a, say, $0.12 cent move in corn? Let's see what that would look like. So if we take $0.12 cents and we multiply that by 5,000 bushels, we're given $600. So that means a $0.12 cent move in corn would equate to $600 in regards to a single standard futures contract. It's not so complicated when we break it down like this. So we can see that one cent is equivalent to $50 with the math that we were doing. If we multiply $50 per contract by the price move in cents, we will know exactly how much the value of the futures contract has increased or decreased. 
In addition, we could also know the corresponding profit or loss on our position, which is why all of this is valuable. One of the enticing factors that might draw a trader to the core and futures market might be the ability to use leverage. And leverage is something that can help us or potentially hurt us, so it's always important to remember to use it responsibly, so I'm gonna explain exactly what leverage is. Leverage is just simply the ability to control a larger position with a smaller amount of capital than that position directly demands for. So let's use an example here and say that we have a $5,000 trading account and we go long on a corn futures contract at $4. Let's assume that the price of corn rises from $4 to $4.40 per bushel. So the actual rise in the price of corn is 10%. This would be our percentage of profit on a non-leveraged position. And so on a standard contract of corn, that would equate to a profit of $2,000. But what does this mean for our $5,000 account if we were to have leverage on it? Well, we could say that with a leveraged account with $5,000 in it, we might gain $2,000 profit from the trade, giving us a $7,000 trading account that would equate to a 40% rise because of the leverage amplifying our gain by four times. But it is important to keep in mind that if price had fallen and not gone our way, our loss would have also been multiplied by four times as well. Now that we understand the value of price change, it's important to understand what might be causing that price to change. And the first thing on the chopping block is gonna be the weather. The weather is huge when it comes to something that is naturally grown outside. The price of corn is heavily impacted by weather conditions. Supply and demand imbalances can shift quickly in this market as a result. We want to try to avoid trading during heavy weather-related events. That means if all the farmers in the Midwest are all of a sudden being battered with a large series of extremely powerful tornadoes that absolutely could disrupt the supply chain of corn and its production and lead to some price changes or some definite increases in price due to a shortage down the line, so it's important to pay attention to these things. We also want to be aware of seasonal tendencies in the corn market. It is a fairly normal occurrence to see the price of corn make a swing low around November. This period corresponds to harvest time, and this is when the largest amount of supply is usually available on the market, and obviously when the supply overwhelms the demand, prices fall. So paying attention to different things along these lines can give us a leading edge on the value of corn and where it might be going. As a corn futures trader, it's also important to know the news. This is because there are key reports that come out regularly that can cause quite a big stir in the market price of corn futures. Even if we're not interested in trading during the times of these releases because it might be a little too volatile for our liking, it's very important to be aware of when they are coming just so we don't get blindsided by the increase in volatility. The first report we should talk about is the USDA report. This comes out every Thursday. So every Thursday, the USDA releases a report on exports. In that report, it shows detailed analysis of the demand for corn exports. It should go without saying that a strong export outlook is often favorable for the corn market and for the price of corn futures. It is also a good idea to compare U.S. corn exports to other corn exporting countries to gauge any major discrepancies that may exist. The next report we need to pay attention to is the Planting Intentions Report, and this occurs at the end of March. This report is also produced by the USDA and is released at the end of March. The Planting Intentions Report details the amount of acreage that is being allocated by farmers for the planting of various crop commodities. Using this report, we have the ability to extrapolate the total size of expected crop production for the season. And finally, we have the Grain Stocks Report, which is released quarterly. This report comes out quarterly and is issued by the National Agricultural Statistics Services, known as the NASS, and the report offers a state-by-state -state update on the stockpiles of corn and other grains. There are other driving factors that influence the futures price of corn as well that we should definitely discuss. The first one is that corn is highly correlated to other grain products like wheat, barley, and soybeans. Therefore, supply and demand imbalances in these markets can often spill over to the corn market. So we want to keep an eye on these correlated markets for signs that something soon might be happening to our corn market. 
Also, as corn is becoming more important in the production of ethanol, the demand for this biofuel can have a substantial impact on the price of corn. The government is actually currently subsidizing corn farmers in an effort to increase the production of ethanol. Any major shifts in this policy would likely affect the price of corn in a large way. And as such, we definitely want to be aware of the latest government policies if it is going to be pushing price one way or the other. It is also worth mentioning that corn traders should definitely monitor the US dollar exchange rate. As the world's reserve currency, the US dollar exchange rate can have an impact on the corn market. Often the US dollar can contribute to long-term commodity price trends. Did I hear someone say benefits? There are definite benefits to corn futures trading, and the first one that I'd like to discuss is the liquidity, which is a big one for me personally. So corn futures are very actively traded and currently has an average daily volume in excess of 300,000 contracts. The average open interest on corn futures contracts is well over 1.5 million. This deep liquidity allows us as traders to enter and exit the market with ease and usually with minimal slippage costs, which all of us like. Another nice benefit of corn futures trading is the safety involved. Corn futures are CFTC regulated and traded on the exchange with central clearing. As a result, the counterparty risk is minimalized. This makes for a safe and secure trading marketplace for all traders involved. We also have the nice benefit of extended trading. Because corn futures trade around the clock, traders are able to stay on top of major developments throughout the day and night to better allow themselves to either take advantage of happenings going on in the world or to potentially jump out of a position that may be getting ready to go against them. We want more benefits. As traders, that is what we do. We always want more for less. That is our goal. We are the masters of risk. We are here to exchange something at one rate and then get more for it when we exchange it later on down the road. And just like that, we want more benefits. And there are some more benefits in regards to corn futures trading. We also have the ability to use leverage. Leverage allows us as traders to use a relatively small amount of capital to control a relatively large position. The use of leverage can help us enhance our potential profits. It also should be duly noted that leverage can be a double-edged sword, and we can also hurt ourselves a little bit quicker if we're not careful with what we're doing. The other added benefit that we should add to the corn futures category would be the increased ethanol demand. As the demand for those biofuels increases like we talked about, investors and traders can definitely take advantage of the future trends that will likely arise with corn because, once again, corn is going to be supplying that ethanol. We also have suitable for any trading style listed as one of our benefits. The corn futures market can be an excellent market for applying fundamental or technical analysis. If you rely mainly on fundamentals, there are plenty of reports that you can evaluate, some of which we already discussed, that will help us make more informed trading decisions on those alone. If we are a technical analysis based trader like myself, we can rely on price charts to do our analysis just the same. Both of these trading styles have the ability to work well in the corn market, and arguably the best option between the two of them is to use them both in cahoots together. So, in conclusion, the corn futures market, while not as mainstream as the e-mini S&P 500 for speculators, is still a very liquid market with very real potential, especially for those fundamental-based traders that love paying attention to the regular reports that are always influencing the price of corn. And if you're a technical analysis-based trader like myself, well, there's no real reason that you can't go back and check out the historical price data and analyze the market that way as well. And when used in conjunction with the reports and the price data, you've got yourself a pretty powerful combination as you might with any other market that you're interested in on. But either way, thank you for joining me again for another Survival Guide episode, this time on Corn Futures. I look forward to seeing you in the next one, but please, before you go, make sure you click the like and subscribe button below, and happy trading, everybody. I'll see you soon. Over and out. Pshh!